terms of the perspective of, of sovereignty, isn't this a simple kind of black and white issue in relation to, for example, the European Union trying to erode British sovereignty? Because there is, for example, potentially a, a border between uh, Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK, and that is causing a lot of tensions, and the UK wants to scrap parts of it. And actually, that's what is seemingly a significant part of Northern Ireland want as well. The British don't enjoy full sovereignty in the North of Ireland. Mrs Thatcher once said that uh, the North of Ireland was as British as Finchley. It's not. If you look at the election, Anaya, half of the population have voted for pro-United Ireland parties. Thus, you have a situation where Britain doesn't enjoy full sovereignty or legitimacy in the North of Ireland. That's the problem that you have to grasp. There is a way around that, Anaya. And the way around that is an Irish border poll. Let the people speak. And let's see what they say. OK, well, uh, bringing more reaction from other perspectives on this issue, I'm really delighted to also be joined by Carlo Breber, writer and professor of creative writing at Trinity College London. Thank you so much uh, for joining me, Carlo. I mean, what, what do you make of some of the things Hello. that uh, Kevin has outlined there, potentially that this is, uh, we need a border poll, and that actually the, is the question of the union, which is the bigger question, not just the question of the Northern Ireland protocol? Um, what do I think? Northern Ireland is a, was an artificially created state. It was created in order to guarantee a permanent Protestant majority. The British did that. That was their work in order to settle the war that was going on in Ireland in the 1920s. And um, it was pretty awful for the minority population. In fact, it was really, really horrible. Um, they did not enjoy the same rights or advantages as everybody else. I'm talking about the Catholics. This then le leads to what we um, euphemistically refer to as the Troubles, which was um, people in, in, in England sort of think, well, it's just the kind of, you know, mad paddies, you know, kicking off causing trouble. Um, people only resort to the kinds of violence that the IRA resorted to um, because they feel they've no other alternative, whether you like it or not. And the Troubles also was a three-sided conflict, not a one-sided conflict. I mean, what I mean is it had three sides. It had the British Army, it had loyalism and loyalists, and it had Republicans. And it was a complete and utter disgusting mess that festered and rumbled and just went on for nearly 30 years until the Good yeah. Friday Agreement solved it. And now what you have is um, 25 years later, um, the people who are the beneficiaries of the Good Friday Agreement, the nationalist population, um, have given, they're not all Sinn Féin supporters, but they have given Sinn Féin a majority in Stormont. I mean, not a majority, but they're the largest party. They have 27 seats to the um, DUP's 25, and therefore they're entitled to um, the First Minister post. But more importantly, in terms of the protocol, what has really happened is um, membership of the EU, the EU Europe has been turned into a sectarian issue. So Catholics, generally speaking, like it. Some Protestants like it too. And Protestants, generally speaking, don't like it. We have enough problems here without adding attitudes to the EU to the list of sectarian grievances that animate our society. And finally, um, because we are a sectarian society with these inbuilt, baked-in animosities, differences of opinion have a nasty habit of becoming violent. So already, not much, but already there's been a bit of yeah. bus burning about the protocol and a bit of just unpleasantness and unpleasant rhetoric. And apparently the Prime Minister is going to come tomorrow and put everybody in their box. Um, he's a man who has lied to the DUP and, you know, insulted. Well, he certainly insulted people in the South.